as a co-founder of the Vegetarian Association of Ghana and a very strong supporter of my brother's outfit, uh, Food Sovereignty. You cannot be free if you cannot feed yourself. Right. Look, every beggar, sooner or later, becomes a nuisance. And when you feed from people's kitchen, there will come a time they will start giving you stale food. If you still take the stale food, the next step is they will give you poisoned food. GMO. And next time, when you buy, pass them and stand by the kitchen, they will throw hot water at your face. That's, it's already happening. We are in Ghana and the so-called scientists are still telling people we don't know the cause of autism. One of the number one causes of autism is the use of the agrochemicals. Because if you spray a weedicide and less than 21 days walk through it, we'll make your research. The dangerous organophosphates pass through the net. Uh, you are never here. And gets to the one time. You know when you are pregnant, biologically, the first thing that develops is the brain. And so it goes directly to the child's brain. You bring that child forth. And then, if you are lucky enough, you have spontaneous abortion. So the child will be aborted. I've traveled around Long Island and make a lot of those things. And I'm telling you, one of the richest areas you can find in the world is in Ghana. Even spiritually, we are on the Greenwich Meridian, the center of the world. You know by mathematics and by physics, it is the center that is able to hold all the weight for everything to spin. But if we don't come over, the only thing that makes the dream work is still work. Yes. We are running a, a foundation called ACID. African communities collaborating everywhere for development and emancipation. We already have a seed bank to support my brother's good work of food sovereignty. We are picking up a lot of old seeds and keeping them for the next generation. We should not leave and just go off history like that. 70 years, 100 years after we are gone, what have we left for the next generation? GTV covered my program two weeks ago. They will soon be showing it on the Heroes of Our Time. So those who want GTV, you can watch it. And I have, as I stand here, more than 250 formulas and recipes. Not only in health, but in food. How old is Western medicine? When a woman is pregnant, uh, Ancestors already knew that there are certain leaves that you lace into their soup. And it avoids something like pregnancy related hypertension, infections transmitted to children. And at least the people they are talking about that they are, they are uneducated. There's a big difference between schooling and educated. You can do a lot of schooling and you can still be an empty headed certificated idiot. <laughs> I was holding a few courses when I was traveling in the States. We are now going to put them online. If you read this my book, you'll be so happy. I've made a workbook also for it. It's already in Amazon, but just like my junior sister said, we need to build our own uh, our own our own African son. <laughs> you see, uh, some of us are sick and tired of pretending to be educated or informed just because we have been given some information that we imbibe and reproduce and then we are given a piece of paper that oh I got a backless. It's just a part of a part of useless knowledge. That's why you finish and you can't get a job to do. I have a master. What have you mastered? 
<laughs> you have mounted the bike of emptiness. And that is, if, if you are truly educated, you have to feed yourself, you have to be able to heal yourself, you have to be able to think for yourself, you have to be able to chart a path for yourself. Other than that, will not bring democracy into Africa and call it democracy. It's a crisis of the demons. Because generally as Africans, we are people who are social. You have now come to Ghana, some of you came for the first time. You visit people and they will not tell you, take a newspaper and we, we are eating. They will tell you, my friend, wash your hands and come and sit down. That's how we live here. We live as a close knitted people. And so you can be wealthy without having money. And you can be poor with a lot of money. And if you are not healthy, you are poor. Because imagine you have all the money and you cannot even eat the food you want to eat. Every five minutes, you are at the hospital being prescribed one chemical or the other. You survive on chemicals. You are just existing, you are not living. If you want to live, then please, the way is African healing science and nutrition. In Africa, nutrition and our healing are inseparable. Every good healer must know the food you must eat right. For example, we have cocoa in Ghana, which contains a lot of magnesium. And our women are still going to the hospital to look for babies. About 85% of the women who have infertility is due to magnesium deficiency. How many of the Ghanaians here have heard about a lot of infertility from the north? They eat a lot of the barba plates, which are so rich in magnesium. They eat a lot of millet. You don't have to be going to do unnecessary insemination or whatever name they call it. Big vocabulary does not heal. It is the true knowledge that heals. Please, we have copies of this book here. Very luckily, one of the things I sent to the states when I was doing my teachings for about nine years continuous was because I wanted people to be okay. What do they call menopause? It's hormonal imbalance. I have a spice that you put into your food, and if you use that spice for treatment, and you come back and tell me that, Somebody has paused you like you are playing cassette. <laughs> then you might be joking. Memory, dementia, Alzheimer's, they don't happen when you eat true African foods. And just like I was saying when I was on my tours in America, you are African everywhere you are. I don't care whether you live in the Caribbean, on the continent, or whatever. The Creator gave us food according to who we are. So when I come to America to do a lot of work, the food I prepare for my nutrition side of my teaching are all African. Because everybody here can eat it and know that it's good. Please, let's join hands. Almost all the organizations are talking about acid in the one way or the other. Let all African communities come together to collaborate in order to bring development and emancipation. Thank you. This book is called Chosen to Heal. And he was, he was chosen um, to do this by the ancestors and the spirit. And we want you to invest in your health, OK? We want you to invest in your health, because when you come to Africa, or you're talking about investment, you want to enjoy life. You don't want to be sick. Don't let them program you that you got to get old and die, OK? That's their story. The new paradigm is that you get old, you prepare to live forever, OK? Because it's written that we will stop dying one day when we overcome what? Deception, and we overcome disease. And even the Europeans are searching for the fountain of youth. They got the website, uh, agentresearch.org. 
you know, so they blasted off into space looking for what? The fountain of youth. Constant Leon was also looking for the fountain of youth back in the day when I was in the little school board. So don't give up on living. Don't let nobody deceive you because nobody have all, the Europeans don't have all the knowledge, okay? The knowledge started in Kenya, okay? And we get that knowledge now. So Methuselah lived for 900 years, so at least try to make it to 100 until we can come up with some more good stuff. We got the phony over here that Dr. Savi talked about. Eat it. The bow bow powder, take that. The nil powder, you know, the woman powder. We got all this stuff right here at this conference. Start to learn about the food that Dr. Savi wrote about. The brown wild rice, wild tomatoes, okay? Not the tomatoes that's coming from you know where. The wild tomatoes are those small cherry ones. Eat those to get more energy. Your hair will grow um, longer. You will, you will lose weight. Okay? I should, if I lived in America, I'd be 300 pounds. That's <laughs> true. But since I lived in Africa for over 30 years, I'm still my college side, my high school side. Because I would return to the fountain of youth. So I want you to invest in your health. Take care of yourself. Okay? You don't have to die. You know, they said the life expectancy in America is 60 something for a uh, man and 74 woman. Japan is 80. Ghana is, I think, 62. Don't believe the hype. You can live as long as you want to, okay? Just take care of yourself because it's unlimited, your potential of your brain and your mind. We're spiritual beings. We were created in the image of gods and goddesses, and gods don't die. So with that, give yourself a round of applause.